Hello students, welcome to another math homework help by your teacher Anne. So today, what we're going to talk about is creating equivalent expressions using properties. So the first one is the commutative properties, the order in which two numbers are added or multiplied does not change the sum or product. So in addition, it means if you add 7 plus 9, that's still going to be the same as 9 plus 7. The order in which they are written doesn't matter because no matter what, 7 plus 9 is going to be 16 and 9 plus 7 is still going to be 16 because we're just adding them. So commutative property can also be applied in multiplication such as 4 times 6 will still be equal if I switch them around with 6 times 4. It's still going to be 24 on both sides. So the order in adding to numbers or multiplying to numbers is not really important because we're still going to have the same sum or product. Now, is it possible for us to apply commutative property in subtraction? Let's find out. So if I have 9 minus 5, we know that's going to be positive 4. What about if I switch them around? The order of 9 minus 5 will have it as 5 minus 9. So this one, we're trying to subtract a bigger number from a smaller number. So that means we're going to pass 0 on our number line. Therefore, our answer here will be a negative 4. So it's obvious that commutative property or properties cannot be applied in subtraction because if you switch the order of the numbers, your answer will be totally different from each other, okay? So do not apply commutative properties in subtraction. What about in division? Let's find out. Okay, if we have 4 divided by 1, we know the answer to this is 4. What about if we switch the 4 divided by 1 around? This one, you're trying to divide a one whole by four parts. So isn't it that's going to be a smaller number? It's like your one dollar, remember? Divided by four, that's going to be 0 0.25, or like your 25 cents. Therefore, commutative property cannot be applied in division because you're going to have two different answers if you switch the numbers around, okay? So community property is only for adding and multiplying. So the next property is associated properties. It is the way in which three numbers are grouped when they are added or multiplied and does not change their sum or product. So if I have three numbers such as 3 plus, then inside the parenthesis is 9 plus 4, that's still going to be the same thing as when I have 3 plus 9 inside the parenthesis and then the plus 4 is outside. So according to PEMDAS, we have to do uh, everything inside the parenthesis first. So we know this expression on the left side of this equation is equivalent to 16. So let's find out if it's still going to be the same on the other side. They are still equivalent to each other because we're just adding them up, okay? So is associative property can be applied in multiplication? Definitely, because we're just multiplying the numbers. Now this time 8 times 5 is inside the parenthesis. So these two expressions from the left side and the other expression on the right side, they are definitely equivalent to each other, okay? Using the property, which is associative property. And once again, when do you know it's associative property? There will be three numbers. And then one or a pair of numbers will be inside the parenthesis on the other side of the equation. And then on the right side, another pair will be inside the parenthesis, okay? That's when you know it's an associated property is being applied. Now, identity properties for adding and multiplying. It is the sum of an addend and zero is the addend. And also, it is the product of a factor and one as the factor. So what do we mean by that? Identity means you're just going to go back to the original number to its own identity. So what? how do we do that in adding? You just add zero to the number, so it's gonna become the same number. Like 13 plus zero, it's still gonna be the add in 13.
So how do we apply identity property in multiplication? By multiplying by 1. Isn't it any number multiplied by 1? It will equal to its own identity. So 9 times 1 is 9. So now you know what identity property is. To get back the original number when you're adding, you just add a 0. To get back the original number uh, when you're multiplying, you just multiply by 1. Okay? And that's how it goes back to its original identity number. So the inverse property is when the sum of an add-in and its additive inverse is 0. Okay? Or when you're multiplying, the product of a factor and its multiplicative inverse will be equal to 1. So how do we apply inverse property when you're adding? That's when we add the opposites, or what they call additive inverse. For example, 7 plus negative 7, since they are different signs, you're going to have to subtract. So 7 minus 7 is 0, because you added the opposites, or their additive inverse. What about negative 12 plus positive 12? Isn't it you have to subtract because they're different signs? So that's going to be equal to 0. Now let's apply inverse property when multiplying. So how do we do that? When you multiply by the reciprocal, okay, of a fraction. So let's have an example. Let's say you have a 6 and that's a whole number and you have to put a 1 underneath because any whole number can be written as a fraction with a 1 at the bottom. Now, let's multiply it by its multiplicative inverse, or what we call reciprocal. And what do we mean by reciprocal? You just flip this around. Then multiply straight across. And you know, 6 over 6 will equal to 1 whole. Let's have another example. This 20 holes can be written as 20 over 1. Then multiply by its multiplicative inverse, or reciprocal. So that's going to be 1 over 20. Multiply straight across, and it's still equal to 1. Now don't forget to do your homework, and I'll see you in class. Bye!